day to all you deep scion. Swim yourselves into the stinky dragon, imbibe our latest brew, hybrid you a do. It's a mixture of trench roast coffee, a bite of bitters, vanilla claw extract, psychic screech sugar, shape changing soda, and topped with battle axed orange slices. One pour of this percolation is enough to transfigure out the root of any problem. Previously, our adventurers were winding their way through the subterranean labyrinth of underglobula in search of a mysterious mould. After some twisting turns, treacherous traps, and other tumultuous troubles, they now find their new friend Hexel in need of help from a cubicular conundrum. Pour yourself a potation. Let's proceed with this pungent pot boiler. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Stinky Dragon. My name is Gustavo Sorolla. I'm the dungeon master of our putrid party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. <laughs> Whee! Ah! No. Yeah, there we go. Normally someone says ow. I was uh, waiting for Barbara. I, s- I send it back with my special powers of monkness. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in charge now. Hi, everybody. It's here, oh, no. the DM of Grotev. <laughs> uh, now I can be a player. This week's Aww. role-playing warm-up question is, describe your character's current relationship with the character that is alphabetically after you. So, Barney, describe your relationship with Chip, Chip to Elga, Elga to Matid, and then Matid back around to Barney. What about Jacques? <laughs> <laughs> you you can character. reply as Jacques if you want. Uh, who who, who would Jacques okay, go? Okay, so it'd be list? Elga's relationship to Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. So yeah, go ahead and uh, kick us off, uh, Barney, if that's okay with you. I'm Chris Damaris, and I play Barney Farney, who is a human cleric. Barney Farney. Barney Farney. <laughs> Uh, I think I think Chip is uh he's a he's a good young man and he's he's got a lot of uh chip kick to a step. Skick. Kick to a step. Get, get, get you, kick what's to what's step. Barney's relationship to Chip? Uh that's a description of Chip. What's Barney's relationship to his relationship? <laughs> uh, relationship. I like I like Chip. You know, I like him I think of him like a you know, like a nephew. The nephew I never had. Or maybe I did have. I don't remember. <laughs> Someone I can be nice to uh, in small instances, but don't have to be around don't all have the time. To be around him yeah, that much. Get them nice gifts once a year. I think he takes care of me more than I take care of him, so I don't think it'd be fair to say he's like my son. There you go. So I guess I'm a crazy uncle. I think that's your relationship to all of us, to be fair. Uh, all right, I'll go. Uh, hey, hey. <clears throat> Been a bit. Who am I? Blaine Gibson hey, there's Chip Haney, also known as Blaine Gibson. I went in reverse order on that. Question mark. I'm, a, I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm a male tiefling rogue, level five. Are we still level fives? I like yes. you threw in male. That's a new it's one. That's what it says on the list. I mean, that's I how I remember it. I didn't just read that. But it's like you do it for the first time every week. Listen, okay, this one's legitimate, though, because we haven't <laughs> recorded with these characters in like a month. It's true. It's been a hot second. Oh! Oh, Elga. Oh, where do I even start? At the beginning. Oh, goodness. She's like a, like a daughter to me. But you know how sometimes you get those dogs and you look into their eyes and it's like, wow, you've lived like hundreds, <laughs> thousands of years. You you might be a human trapped in the soul of a dog. I see that in Elga. So I, as much as I want to say she's like a daughter to me, I feel like she's actually like, like a grandmama. Like a Grammy. So, I don't know. All I know is I, I sure do like that, Elga. Oh, gee. Wow, that's a lot to write on a birthday card. <laughs> just, just four lines of, oh, oh It's Elga. like a dog that's had lived a thousand lives. Why couldn't it have been, like, a child that had, like, old soul eyes? Why was it a dog? Have you seen a child that has old soul eyes? Because if so, that's creepy as heck. Yeah. I, but I guess I'm just you <laughs> probably, I child. guess I just thought it was like he would like a daughter to me, but you know, when you have a dog, <laughs> she's like my daughter, dog grandma. <laughs> yeah, dog that likes to bite everyone with no it's explanation, true. drink yeah. their blood. Yeah, she's very, classic she's very dog things. Okay, um, thank you. Well, that's very sweet. I'm gonna, oh, so, she's but, also like a chihuahua that likes to bite you, but you still love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> For my form of the beast, could I turn into a chihuahua? Is that yeah, sh- sure. <laughs> Elga chihuahua. just starts shivering. Oh. 
Well, hello. My name is Elga von Brass. Uh, I'm Barbara Dunkelman, who plays Elga. And she's a half elf vampire barbarian. And you know, Matid, Matid, I would say, is still very mysterious. And you know, you can't spell mysterious without Matid. I would say. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of like when you have one of those neighbors who you like you don't know very well, but like they're really sweet and they like make sometimes goodies for the other neighbors, but they don't really talk a lot. So it's like you like them, but you're still wary of them, but you want to be friends with them, but you don't know if they want to be friends with you. And so you just kind of like do your thing together. <laughs> That's my deed. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm John Reisinger. I play Mati Confucius, who's an uh, Air Cochrane ghost monk. And uh, Mati's relationship with uh, Bani is complicated. Um, uh, Mati is interested and intrigued by Bani, but um, Mati doesn't trust people very easily. And Bani is very mysterious. Bani is not very specific about his past. Mm. What is what is there? And so Matisse's not sure whether or not to uh, trust this uh, odd, uh, wildly as athletic man who can jump out of windows. <laughs> um, it's still something that rings in, in Matisse's memory, that moment of watching a geriatric man with a walker leap out of a college window. So, yeah, I, I, it's just uh, apprehension. Uh, because of the mystery behind those eyes, those old eyes. Like when you see a dog that has like old dog. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that is what Mati thinks when Mati looks at Bonnie's. That is an old dog. And would you say he's like an uncle to you or what kind of uh, family? <laughs> I mean, um, Mati's pretty sure Mati might be the oldest one of the group. And so Mati doesn't actually see Barney as like an elder to Mati. Mm. Interesting. That is interesting. That makes sense. But I was gonna say, I imagine all this in front of a family therapist. Like we're all saying these things, and someone's like, "Oh yeah, a hundred percent in family th in group therapy." Matid would be just blunt and just would take, <laughs> say the truth and the honest. Dog uh, that's yeah, lived yeah. a thousand years. <laughs> I see. Yeah, Needs to be that. put down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that that is interesting about the age dynamic. Even though. Barney is the old man. Matid and Elga might both be older. I don't. I'm not, I don't know that. I'm I think not, I'm Chip's not probably the youngest. I'm the baby of the group. The yeah. baby. Where's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. I'd never thought about the specifics of that age dynamic. Just because Barney's the only one who appears to have aged. Anyway, that's it for the arrow question. If you all remember, you collapsed into a square stone room with a raised stone catwalk skirting the perimeter above you. To the north and south were two doors, and on the catwalk above you, you found a third exit. Unfortunately, while speaking with and striking on four stone statues at the corners, Elga became trapped inside a transparent gelatinous cube, and though she managed to find freedom, Barney succumbed to the slimes insides instead. And as if that weren't enough, while your backs were turned, yet another gelatinous cube revealed itself and engulfed your companion, Hexel. We were in the thick of it, so we're just gonna jump right back in. Elga, it was actually your turn. You are the one who is up. Oh my God. After is Barney. Real quick, could we go ahead and just check the box for taking a long rest since we've been in this cave for four weeks? <laughs> You've been like in suspended animation. It's not actually restful. You've been like frozen. It's like when you're playing a video game and you pause it and you go do like run an errand for a month and then you come back. You're like, oh, right. I was in the middle of something. Like in the middle of combat. <laughs> yeah. If you could remind me like where I am in relation to Barney and Hegzel. Yeah, you were near the, I think all of you actually were pretty much for the most part up near the northern part of the room engaged with a gelatinous cube, that the one that you were aware of initially. Hexel and the other gelatinous cube are on the southern end of the room by the southern door. So that's that's pretty much how it's laid out. So the one in front of us in the north is like, that's taken damage. Yeah, you all have, have done uh, a bit of damage for that one. Okay, I'm going to try to just destroy that one so it doesn't keep creeping up on us. I'm going to use my great axe of gaining to... Give it a little slicey slice. Cut this into little jello cubes. It slices. Say. It dices. What else does it do? <laughs> There's always room for gelatinous cube. Elga, be careful with the slashing damage. We're not sure if the cubes were split into Asia uh, cubes. Oh, but then that'd be so cute, like little baby <laughs> jello cups, just like uh, <laughs> moving around on the floor, and then we could just squish them with our feet. Now, Mateen, would you want to fight one 30 foot gelatinous cube <laughs> or 31 foot <laughs> gelatinous cubes? 
I, I think I, Matisse would rather fight the tiny ones because it just like Matisse would do like uh, unarmed like uh, kicks to all of them and just stomping yeah, them all out. Area of attack as well would work. Okay, I'm gonna do my great acts of gaining. Get those gains, Elga. Ooh, 15, does that hit? Yeah, that does hit. Nice. Excellent. They have low AC. Doing 17 points of damage. <laughs> All right. 17 points of slashing damage. Elga unleashes her great axe of gaining and puts some serious slashes into the gelatinous cube, which is starting to look and a little ragged. It does also a plus two because I'm raging. So that would be 19 points. Yeah, the cube is worse for wear, but is still quivering with delight as it slowly digests Barney Farney. Well, that's the one on the south, though, right? No, Barney's in the one in front of you. Oh, but, Hexel's in the, the one on the south of you. Gotcha. Correct. All right, well, I'm going to slash it again because I got two attacks. Oh. Yeah. Two attacks. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I missed that. That is a 26. Woo. That does hit. And then I will do... Shwiga swing. <laughs> uh, that would be 11 points of damage with my rage. Shwiga swing. Shwiga swing. Shwiga swing. Shwiga swing. That's new, El- El- Elga's new catchphrase. It's classic. <laughs> Should we get a shoe? you saying? You uh, you hit it again. It looks like the gelatinous cube has a tentative hold on its strange life, but it is still alive. Okay, Dang, this thing's got a fair amount of health. Yeah, because it took like impressive. it took damage from like Chip. It yeah. took damage from Barney. Took damage from me, and now Elga. The trade-off is it has pretty terrible armor class. Mm-hmm. And Gus, again, is not telling us if any of these are resisted. Oh, yeah. yeah. When we first started fighting it, I bet it was like pristine jello, like transparent and beautiful. And now it's like when you go to like CeCe's Pizza and then you like get one of those little sticky things and you've been hitting things with it all day and it's got hair. Oh, and... like out of the gotcha yeah. pond, like a little yeah. sticky hand. Yeah. Disgusting. It smells. No one wants to touch it. Do they smell? Oh, uh, I wish I did this before. Now I'll, I'll hold on this. Okay. All right. Sorry. I have a spell as a bonus action that I could have used to do some extra damage on it before I attacked, but oh, I have, gotcha. yeah, I have, I have Hunter's Mark, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, Next time. All right, so that is my turn, yes. Okay, that's it for Elga. Uh, Barney, you're up, then a Gelatinous Cube, and then Matid. Oh, Barney, you're in the cube. You take acid damage. Okay. Oh. Can I do anything in the cube? Like, how yeah, does that work? after you take your acid damage. Okay. You can oh, take damage. Them out. Oh, 25 points of uh, of acid damage on <laughs> Barney Farty. 66s. You got almost like perfect score on that. Oh my God. I'm a high achiever. I'm out. Ugh. That was oh, fun. No. Oh, you'll digest even better now that you're not wriggling yeah. in there. Sorry, I didn't, get, I should have taken you out. I thought, <laughs> I thought it would be, I thought I would be able to take this thing down. Barney goes limp. It's hard to tell, but uh, he's floating in suspended animation inside of the gelatinous cube. Now, Barney, this might hurt, but think of the wonders for your skin. You, it's got exfoliating qualities, I'm sure. You're going to look clean as a whistle when you get out of there. I, I think he is uh, <laughs> un- unconscious in there. Uh, oh, Jeep. he might be dead, guys. <laughs> <He is. laughs> I don't know how this works. If I take poison damage at my turn, do I still get it? Do I do a at the top save? of the turn? Yeah. Well, it's it's acid damage right at the top, and yeah, you you, you asked about your death save. Yeah, is so that I do asked? one, or I wait for the next round. So it's when your character hits zero, they become unconscious, and that's when they begin making death saving throws. So uh, you would make one right now. So that answers your question of what you can do, Chris. You can do a death yep. save roll. <laughs> Eleven. Hey, that's good. Yep. Yay. Okay, that's it for Barney. It's time for the other gelatinous cube. He's pretty happy digesting Hexel. Let's roll some damage for that. Oh, it's that one. One on the south. How far is it from, like, the closest member of our party? 21. Because we're all, like, between these two things. It's about 40 feet away. Okay. The room is pretty big. And they're pretty much on the other end. The, uh, yeah, on the other end of the room. I'd say total, the room might be between 50 and 60 wide. So it's about 40 feet to the other side. And you just did 21 damages. T- damages. Damage uh, to uh, Hexel. Yeah. Are they still okay? Hexel's still moving, unlike Barney. Oh, I guess Hexel can try to make a save to get out of there. Uh, what is it? It's, not, it's the gelatinous cube's turn. It's not Hexel's turn. I'm getting ahead of myself. Matid, it's your turn. Okay. After Matid is Chip. Yahoo. Old Chip off okay. the old block. B. Matid's going to gamble that the cube that has Barney in it is close enough that Matid could probably finish it off and then pull the cleric out. Try it. 
he seems comfortable and fine in there while he does his death rolls. He doesn't seem to be struggling. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got all the time in the world to roll his little dice. Yeah, because like pulling him out right now would be like what? Just pulling out just an unconscious body. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a couple more death save throws. Mateed's very pragmatic. These are all things that goes in Mateed's mind, like just trying to think of what, the, what they Chris should do. just nodding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Poor little guy. <laughs> Poor little Barney. We'll get you out there, little boy. I mean, old man. I can do two actions, two attacks per action. I get my one action. So I'm going to do use my bonus action, and I'm going to cast Arms of the Astral Self, which starts off with an AoE attack to anything within my site that I choose. Within 10 feet, sorry, within 10 feet, which I am right by the cube um, because that was where I ended my last turn. So that starts off with 2d6 uh, force damage on a dex saving throw. So DC 14 dex saving throw from the cube, please, Gustavo Sorolla. All right. FYI, whenever you use arms of the astral self, I picture like those gifts people make where they add like little stick arms to things that don't have arms. And it's like, hey, like going around like jazz hands and stuff. Uh, That's what I always think in my mind. I thought it was cool when I added it to Matid's, uh, because it's like one of the paths you can take with a with a monk, and I think of it more like multiple wings. Mm. But that's just how I envisioned it. Mm. No, I I envisioned it the same exact way that you did, Gus, like to a T. (laughs) When people just draw on the arms to like birds and stuff like that. Yeah, Uh, I was thinking more like uh, Angemon from uh, Digimon. I'm sorry. What was the save that you asked me for? 14 dex saving throw. 14 dex. You'll be shocked to know the gelatinous cube has a negative four on its uh, (laughs) dexterity. So it needs an 18 or better in order to make this save. It'd be really cool if this damage could just end it and then I could do a lot of other. Nice. Cool. Still a good roll though, but. (laughs) Still a good roll. (laughs) If not, if it had a negative four. No, I rolled two ones. It was two points of damage. Not quite enough. So it really was stick figures then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I always imagine like in like Bollywood when they're doing like the multiple arms and then, you know, uh, all that cool stuff. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and do a attack on this gelatinous cube with, I think, my Spear of the Superior Baker is what I want to do. Okay. And I want to make sure not to pierce the little man inside of it. I mean, it's already down. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I can, you can you can do damage to them. So uh, that's a, I'm going to roll for attack. That's a 22. That nice. hits. That's 12 points of damage, piercing damage. Yeah, the cube shudders and shivers a little bit and then seems to lose its form <gasps> and uh, melt away uh, into the ground. Oh! oh. Leaving Barney, less, resting him gently onto the, onto the stone floor. He's like a fresh baby, yeah. just covered in placenta. Just imagine. Her little just baby like Bernie. Gooey. Yeah. I mean, you know, like Han Solo coming out of the uh, carbonite? Uh-huh. He's like... <laughs> yeah. for, like that, but dead. Yeah. <laughs> no breathing. It, it's funny. Everyone thinks of something different. I was thinking of Neo coming out of the pod in the Matrix. I was thinking about Neo coming out of the pod, too. <laughs> Me and Gus, same wavelength today. Yeah. <laughs> Slippery. And so, for some reason, nude. <laughs> Barney lost his clothes in there. <laughs> the the oh, acid no. ate away his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Except he somehow still has his briefs on, his tidy yeah, whities yeah. Which Barney wears tidy okay. whities canonically. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, so Barney's good. Well, relatively. He's fine. So uh, I'm going to turn my attention to the other cube and fly towards that cube. And I have another attack in my action. So I'll go ahead and do, I guess it's my, it's that spear again. I stab it with an attack roll of 24. That hits. 13 points of piercing Ooh, 13. damage. This is the first bit of damage on this cube. Uh, your spear pierces it. It's uh, not as effective as the other one. It doesn't kill this one, but uh, it does seem to, to hurt it a bit. Okay. And then, I think that's everything I do because I did my bonus action, did my action, I did my movement, and I blow a cheeky little kiss at the gelatinous cube. Wow. Oh. Did it blush? <laughs> <laughs> Two sides of it just become little red little, little splotches. <laughs> Nani. Nani. I don't know if a bird can blow a kiss because they can't make a kissing sound. It just clicks. <laughs> <laughs> gelatinous cube, yeah. what Kawaii does. 
<laughs> That's what Mati does. Mati does more like a drag queen click, like a, you know, <laughs> and winks. The cube replies, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Q-woo. I'm done. All right, that's it for Matid. Back up to the top. Chip, who will be followed by Hexel. Hey there, Chip Painty here. Uh, what's my distance from the cube and what's my distance from Barney? You're pretty close to Barney. You all were, you know, pretty much right up on it. I'll say Barney's five feet away from where you are. Okay. And the other, the, you know, this cube at the northern end is, uh, has been vanquished. The other one down to the south is probably about 40 feet away. Okay, I run 10 feet away from Barney, away from the cube, and then I sprint 15 feet towards Barney (laughs) so that I can slide in like a dude in a baseball game. And I say, Barney, Barney, stay with me. It's not your time to go. And then I, um, just for my mental picture, do you do like a leg first slide or like a head first slide? Mm, Leg first, leg first slide. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool, very dramatic. And I take a potion of healing out of my bum bag and I, I take the cork, I spit it out, and then I put it in my mouth. And then I put it in his mouth and say, I'm gonna bring you back to life. Do you, you baby bird it? Yeah, are you baby birding him? Matid, are you familiar with this? You said that with the potion in your mouth. I want you to take a gulp of water and then say the same, lo- deliver the line with that liquid in your mouth. Here he goes. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's where Blurble Durble came from. He's just water water everywhere. On, he just, just got... spit all over himself. It's very cold up here, too. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So I baby bird the potion into Barney's mouth hole. Yeah, okay. Oh, you're so slippery. You're so slimy. I can hardly keep my hands on you, my baby boy. <laughs> all right. Uh, go ahead and roll for that uh, healing... Barney, I guess. Okay, I do want to call back. Remember when we were talking about kind of our rule that we were thinking where if it's an action, they get the full effects of the health potion. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Still, is that still a play? Yeah. Okay. You want to do that? I, I, if that's cool with you. Oh, yeah. Because that'd be 2d4 plus 2, so that'd be 10. 10, yeah. So then you get 10 points of health back, uh, Barney. <gasps> where am I? I, I slap his face <laughs> a couple you with me, Barney. It's your nephew, Chipaney. Why are we sl- <laughs> Why are we slowly sliding down the floor? <laughs> you you fell into a giant jello, just like Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then, I mean, I that was my action, and I did a lot of movement already to do the dramatic entrance. Yeah, twenty five feet of movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got five feet to go. Oh, right. Don't you have thirty feet? You have thirty. Yeah, you have five more. Then I move two feet and then I slide back three feet again just to make sure we're all rounded out. That just looks like you slip. <laughs> there, is, there is goo everywhere. Okay, so then outside of that, uh, what's that stinking thing that I got there? You I'm got a so bonus sorry. action? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. What is it? I, I'm working on it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Cunning action. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. So I'm going to hide. You can dash towards the other cube. What am I going to do? I'm going to dash <laughs> up to it just to get swallowed okay. myself? <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, that was very aggro. That's, thank no, you for fine. your input, Matid. No, you, you, do, you do rogue things. You go hide. All right, I'm going to go hide. In this open arena we're in? <laughs> can I hide? Yeah, I mean, you can always try to hide. It's your ability. You're a rogue. All right. He's hiding behind the, un- the, the the unmoving body of Barney at this point. I like the uh, keyword there is cu- you can try. You can, al- you can always try. It's always <laughs> a matter try. of what the role is. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to hide. What if it's just Chip gathering up a bunch of, like, the gel from the dead one and just covers himself in it, and now he <laughs> looks like he's one of them? Camouflage. Oh. 14 points of acid damage. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, stinkers, the holidays are here, which means holiday deals. November 13th to 16th, buy two, get one free on all tops with code FREETOP at checkout at store.roosterteeth.com. Then on November 18th and 19th, first members can use code FREESHIP for free shipping on orders over $50. And finally, on November 20th, it's buy one, get one free for all Stinky Dragon merch, including our new puppet shirt and pins releasing on that day. These first batch of pins include Bart and Gum Gum character stats you can use as NPCs in your own D&D campaign. Keep an eye on the store on November 20th before they're all sold out. 
The first album from the Grotesque campaign, Arrested in Natural City, is streaming now. You can listen to it on all your favorite music streaming platforms. It features 11 tracks of monstrous melodies and thrilling themes, including the campaign's main theme song, Greetings from Grotesque. Check it out wherever you stream music. What's something that works so well it feels like magic? What comes to mind for me are things like air conditioning, noise canceling headphones, Wi-Fi, and of course, selling with Shopify. In case you don't already know, Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million order stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. And no matter what you're selling, Shopify has you covered from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. They've also helped turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Plus, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, as well as millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash dragon. Most of the time, shaving feels like a chore, it's time consuming, and if I'm using a cheap razor, which let's be honest, is the case most of the time, I end up with a few nicks and cuts by the time that I'm done. That's why you gotta meet Henson Shaving. They're a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover. Now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. By using aerospace grade machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend less than the thickness of a human hair, which means you get a secure and stable blade with a vibration free shave. Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. Uh, that means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. Plus, it's affordable. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about three to five dollars per year to replace the blades. It's absolutely great, super high quality. I'm, I've got like really coarse, thick facial hair and sensitive skin. So uh, if I use a cheap razor, it, it really nicks and irritates my skin. Uh, I do not have that problem at all with Henson. The blades are so great. They just cut right through my thick hair and they really, really give me a great close shave, which is really tough to get for me. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash stinky to pick the razor for you and use code STINKY and you'll get two years worth of blades for free with your razor. Just make sure you add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash STINKY and use code STINKY. All right, is that it for Chip? That's it for Chip. Good job, right. Chip. Oh, yeah. Oh, did Chip get uh, medical training while he was a volunteer firefighter? Is that why he was so good at that? Oh, of course. You want to talk about fire, my time at the <laughs> volunteer fire brigade? Oh, I can just spin you a yarn about it. It's one of my spin favorite things. Spin a yarn. <laughs> I also like how he was probably like a, a little, like a softball league, little league, whatever it's called. Yeah. How did Coach you know? Or player. Yeah, volunteer. Or both. Column A, column B. That's my turn. All right, it's Hexel's turn. This time, Hexel is going to try to make that strength check. Get out of there. This should be pretty easy. Hexel needs a four or better. Don't roll a one, Hexel. 14. Good job. Yeah, Yay. Hexel is able to burst free from the gelatinous cube that's engulfing it currently. Then what are they going to do? Hexel got any attacks? Yeah, Hexel's got some stuff. Okay, Hexel seems to be, you know, vibrating and quivering a bit. And then it seems like Hexel reshapes itself and now looks also like it's taken on the form of Elga. Oh, that's fun. Wait a minute. Hey, but it's called Jelga. <laughs> Just Jelga. <laughs> that's good. You know, I do have a twin sister, so this is messing with my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hexel also kind of moves a bit just to be out of attack range from the gelatinous cube. That was a cool trick. That was cool. I like Jelga. Welcome. It is now Elga's turn. <laughs> I like the idea that it's just 
like the same size and shape as me. It's gel with like a blonde wig on and like googly <laughs> eyes that are just like sloping <laughs> down. <laughs> It's, it's all the stuff it found in the gelatinous cube, like the remnants. Right. It's not a wig. It's like someone's scalp, oh. <laughs> like a previous victim's scalp and hair. Gross. So Elga, it's your turn after Elga is Barney. Just FYI, Elga, because Jelga is there, the gelatinous cube will have difficulty attacking you. So Jelga is like protecting me almost? Kind of like a distraction. Like it's confusing. Yeah. What do I do? You can attack it. Now that Jelga's there, does it also take on Jelga's voice qualities, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a little girl, and I'm by the gelatinous cube. Which one do I hug? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to attack Jelga because... Well, Jelga's on your side. Jelga's Hexel, just uh, reformed. Just reformed. Wow, that's yeah. so weird. Okay. And how close am I to the cube now? You were still pretty much right up on it because you attacked... Oh, wait, did you attack it? No, you didn't. Matita no. attacked it last time. I yeah, so one you're, in front of us. Yeah, you're up at the northern end of the room still, so you're about 40 feet away or so. Okay, well, first I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark as a bonus action. Oh. And I'm going to choose that big old gelatinous cube. Smart. So for this, it's you choose a creature. You could see, is this considered a creature? Yeah. I imagine so. Okay. And then until the spell ends, you deal an extra 1d6 of damage to the target whenever you hit it with a weapon attack but I have advantage on any wisdom or perception or wisdom survival check you make to find it as well. Okay. So, cast Hunter's Mark. This is my first time casting that spell ever. Woohoo! Okay. You're a wizard, Elka. <laughs> wizard. And then I would like to run up closer to it. My walking speed is 40, so I want to get like, you know, five feet away from it. Melee okay. range. Melee range. And then I would like to use... Once again, my great axe of gaining to slash at it. Okay. 12? Uh, that hits. These, 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 things have, nice. these things have terrible AC. Excellent. Okay. And that does, oh my God. Technically nine points of damage with my roll. Nine points of damage. <laughs> roll to one on damage. But it's plus six, so it's seven, and then plus and two then for rage. my rage is nine. And then for my hunter's mark, I do roll an extra D6. Mark. That's a six. Ooh. So it would be a total 15 points of damage. All right. That's a pretty good amount of damage. And I know, just FYI, some listeners who are D&D players may know that barbarians cannot cast spells while they are raging, but Elga's Hunter's Mark is a paranormal power that is part of her being a vampire. So it is okay. It's not casting a spell. It's a paranormal power, which is kind of like a little homebrew thing that we got going on. I was wondering what that paranormal powers meant under it. Yep. I was like, it feels like it's not typical D&D. Okay, and then I want to attack again for my second attack. Mm -hmm. With that axe again, serving me so well. Do a little slash nat 20. Oof. That's a critical hit. Yep. Go ahead and roll your damage. Whatever the second die is that it, if it shows two die, whatever the second die is, yep, we'll just say is a 12. Okay, so it'd be... 1 plus 12 plus 6... 13, 19, plus 2, 21. 21. And then plus another D6 for Hunter's Mark. Mm -hmm. So it would be another 4. So 25 points of damage. Correct. That's not a bad little round. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> you can do it from Jelga! She dices. <laughs> Elga looks like she went to culinary school with those slashing skills, but the uh, gelatinous cube is still up. It is pretty damaged after... Uh, Elga's fearsome attacks, but it is still uh, oozing a, around. A gelatinous cube with like little bandages on it, and like. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel crutch. so good. You know when you're in culinary school and you're cutting Jello. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the first lesson they teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Boil water and cut Jello. Yeah, make thin slices. <laughs> that's my turn. All right, that's it for Elga, which means it's Barney's turn. Then the cube, then Matisse. Okay. How far away am I from that cute? About 40 feet. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> um, I'll cast... Okay. Uh, no, no, I just to make sure I was far away from it. Barney's a little scared of oh, it. Oh, oh, uh, gotcha. Barney's going to cast Guiding Bolt. Level one like last time? Yeah. That's a, a crit for 30. All right. Yeah, that uh, Please. that hits. Do spells crit like that? Does, does it change the damage? Let's see how it rolls this damage when you hit it. I'm curious to, to see what it does. That's 35 damage. Oh my god. Well, it's going to be more than that because it made you roll twice. So some of those we're going to say are max. 
I don't know if I've ever dealt with you this sure before. That Normally, was a level one guiding bolt. It said crit when I rolled. It, yeah, it critted. So it, it normally it's four d six for oh. guiding bolt, but it threw eight in there. All That's right, what so I was. Second. I was. I was seeing eight d six. I'm like, that is not a level one spell. Yeah, it's because I it, crit. It was. It doubled the amount of dice. Yeah. God, I'm imagining Barney still prone and covered in like goo, and he just raises a finger like an uncle having you pull his finger. Yeah. And just. <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> <laughs> Nuked it from orbit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a Barney lifts a, a weary finger, pointing at the gelatinous cube on the other side of the room, and a guiding bolt that seems way bigger than normal, way uh, faster than normal, shoots out straight to the cube and explodes it into many, many little chunks, spraying all over Elga and Jelga. Uh, you all got slimed. <laughs> Barney just did a Kamehameha shot on this guy <laughs> but it's also like i loosened the can yeah yeah, yeah. Know, and then he just kind of <laughs> popped it open <laughs> you your two slashes actually formed an x and he uh, shot at that x uh, the target yeah the finishing move yeah yeah the cube explodes and uh you all are safe from any gelatinous cube you have vanquished both of them Oh, we're done with the cave. Good job, everybody. Just kidding. Hey. We've only got two right paths. We need five. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shoot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was just combat from a monster card. Yeah, just go ahead and uh, shake it all off. You all are ready to continue your search for the mold of Underglobula. Does anyone perhaps have anything to uh, bring this uh, a cleric to maybe a more formidable health level? I, I can do that. Uh, not very healy. Yeah, I, I'm, as a monk, there ain't nothing in my, I, I break things. I don't build them back up. I think Barney is our so, healer. Yeah. So since you all successfully vanquished the gelatinous cubes, you all can take one short rest and you earn one right path card. So you are actually a little closer to uh, finding your right path. Oh yeah, we're still going through this place. Lovely. All right, I'll take a short rest. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I have a temp HP, but I wonder if there's something that refills when I take a short rest. For a rogue? <laughs> yeah. Lucky. Is cunning know, action rest. reset with the short rest? I don't think cunning action has. You don't lose no. cunning actions. Yeah, you can do that like every turn. Unlimited cunning? That's right. Gang, I'm going to opt out of this here short rest, but while you guys take a seat and rest your bones, I'm going to show you my breakdance routine. Ooh. Ah. Make Kick a performance it. check. There it goes. Matid's actually watching. Matid doesn't actually sleep. Hacha. Oh, yeah. That's a nine. Oh, oh yeah. Matid is doing the very much like just the nodding and eyebrows raised up like, yes. Whoop, is that just... <laughs> Some people might call that dancing. Yes. Here we go. All right. Now kick it. You, Matid. It's more like broken dancing, am I right? <laughs> I'm not going to laugh at that. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just a reminder's sake, this room that you all were in with the gelatinous cube, this is, I assume, where you take a short rest, had two doors, one to the north or on the lower level where you are, one door to the north, one door to the south. And I believe Matit had flown up to the catwalk and you had seen another third exit up there to the north as well. Yeah, because we fell, right? Correct. Yeah. Should we take one of these doors or should we go up to the catwalk and take that door? Oh, hmm. hmm. well, how hard is it going to be to get all of us up to that tall door? How high up is it? Yeah, I mean, like, you're the only one that can fly. So unless you're going to shuttle us back and forth. What? I mean, you guys just... cannot fly? I thought everybody could fly. No, so actually. <laughs> Why didn't you learn how to fly? That seems like a very helpful skill for you to well, have. Well, see, I learned how to sneak. And uh, <laughs> that's that's where I put all my die in. You would learned how to get lower to the ground, not higher uh, off the ground. Yeah. Hold on, let me try something. Bet. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> quite yet, Elga. No. Bet. Okay. Oh. You grow some hair in your ears. It's like I'm slowly hitting puberty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> The catwalk's about 30 feet up above the ground floor. Yeah, I could get uh, each of you up there if that's the way we want to go. Yeah, like just carrying us each one by one type thing. Yeah. Me first! 
Chip reaches up. Uh, Helga pushes Chip away. <laughs> uh, okay. Apparently we are going that way. So yeah, Mati does a little bit of a taxi service of taking everybody up to the catwalk. We. Okay. You all are able to get up to the top and exit out of the exit to the northern passage. Why not? All right, Chip, you are the one who drew the last card, which means after you, it is Elga's turn to draw a card. You have center and right. And what are the... Available to you currently, you have careful consideration uh... and boost morale. And one of those is charisma and the other one is... Like Dex? Morale is Careful consideration is wisdom and boost morale is charisma. Um... I love that confidence. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll do the, uh, I'll boost morale. You know, Elga's feeling really good after beating those jellos, and so, you know, I think team, we're feeling better than ever, am I right? Yeah! Kick am it! Am I right, Barney? Start breaking down. Yeah. Am I right, Matid? <laughs> <laughs> Matid gives a little pat on Elga's head. <laughs> okay, that is the most enthusiasm I've seen from Matid in ages! Let's go, team! I like to think that I gotta wait to see how your roll goes, mm, and then that would determine the reaction. Yeah, so after exiting the cave, you all, you know, came across what appeared to be an unfinished junction, but you carve your way through the miry cave wall, making your way closer and closer to the destination. Elga begins cheering everyone on, making her charisma check. Do, 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 yeah! Woohoo! 20! Oh, Mateen, wow. Mateen is very excited. Mateen, Mateen just is, pass, 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 pass. Yeah, pass. yeah, yeah. Big, like, wings <laughs> going everywhere and everything like that. <laughs> Helga's like a basketball. <laughs> so boost morale allows you to remove a dead-end card in the crossroads from the game. You draw a new card from the deck and place it face down in the crossroads. Is there a dead end in the river? There was one in there. It has been removed. So you have three options available to you, Elga. Left, center, or right. Let's go center. Because you guys sent her to pick a card. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you uh, go center through the cave system. And as you're walking along, you find a set of bone dice on the ground. Bone dice? Ooh. Yeah, like Could dice I made out of bones. Pick them up and roll them? Hey, yeah. guys. Let's say it's two six-sided dice. Okay, so it's two d6s? Yeah. You playing crap, Zelga? Um, I'm playing something. I rolled a one and a four. Yeah, uh, the point is set at five. What is I that? I want to play craps. Did a voice just like echo through the caves like that? Yeah. It's a craps joke. It's a it's a, a gambling joke. Yep. Oh, no, okay. they just appear to be- I'm gonna uh, put on the pass line. <laughs> hey, there you go. They appear to be uh, just dice made out of knuckle bones. Okay. Could I like investigate them for like any sort of magic or something or? Sure. You could, if you have that ability or you can just make like an arcana check. I'll do an arcana check. 15? They don't seem to be any kind of magic device you're aware of. They do seem, however, to be finely made bone dice. Mm. Could I pocket them? Yeah. All right. Elk has got dice. No way those are haunted. Yeah. <laughs> They're not totally not cursed dice. <laughs> Could I show them to my party members? I mean, like, do you guys like these? Do you think we should take them with us? Or do, I don't know what they do, but maybe if we want to play a little game while we're bored traveling, we could play something. I, did, I don't know if <clears throat> there's any relation, but those are cubes. And there's two of them. And we just fought two big cubes. Uh. I am so proud of you, Chip. You know your shapes. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you are progressing quite well, my friend. <laughs> did you know he could do that, Elka? I did not know he did that. I'm very proud of you, Chip. You know, you learn, you, you know what the ball is. Now you know what the cube is. <laughs> I go south to that door we just went up to to just walk off the cliff. <laughs> 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 Is there anything else in this room other than these bone dice? No, that's it. From a metagame perspective, Barbara, uh, that was a treasure card you turned over. So you get oh. treasure. Okay. Yeah. So I do pocket them. All right. That's it for Elga. Barney, you are up after Barney is Mati. Only one check left? Correct. You did boost morale, so all the stuff is careful consideration, which is wisdom. Mm. Careful consideration reveals two cards in the crossroads, and you can choose one. 
Okay. So I rolled a 17. 17. Ooh. Barney, despite his bumbling exterior, does actually have some wisdom here. I'm a goo it. <laughs> You're oh, what? <laughs> Mr. Magoo it. I'm a goo it. Yeah. Oh, it's just I'm fluent in Chris. <laughs> oh, I think he said I'm a goo it. That's what and I, I heard. Like, like you know goo really well, like. <laughs> or maybe like uh, maybe uh, um, what's his name? That one detective. Columbo. Columbo. I Columbo it. I again. I, I'm fluent in Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. Wow. Because of your careful consideration, the wisdom you bring to the party, you're able to know that going left leads to treasure and going Ooh. right is the right path. Oh, mm. both seem good. Selfishness or progression? Well, I mean, we, we would end up doing both of them, right? Do they stay or reset after this? Reset. Oh. And then he says, eh, treasure. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think? Should we get some treasure? I mean, uh, we do have a right path right there, right? Which we need. Well, yeah. We need Perhaps five of the them. treasure was our time all along. <laughs> okay. How well, many guess, right paths do we have now? Three is, or four? This, I gotta be very clear. This is where Chris has a hard time making decisions because this is where Chris conflicts with character. Character <laughs> should be that, that Barney would make an altruistic choice. Chris is a hoarder in video games and a hoarder in any of this stuff. And he's just like, I see shiny. Can I get shiny? I want shiny. There's always, it's like that gambling thing of like, well, what could we win? <laughs> well, Barbara just got a pair of dice, so maybe I got not, pair the, dice. not the gr- greatest Although stuff I, ever. I'm thinking, and I, this might be metagaming too much, I'm thinking these dice might be like a bonus I could add to a roll, maybe. potentially down the line. Or they're like valuable. Mm. Yeah, which, you know, it's pretty good, but also we need five right paths, so. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just go to the right path if they reset. We just walked past fantasy lottery. Like it's like, it was like all the money we could possibly imagine. (laughs) All right, well, let's keep going. All right, Barney, you spot two gemstone statues pointing down a corridor and you follow the path and discover another constellation carved into the cave ceiling. You feel like you're almost there. You're almost there. All right, after Barney is Matid. What's my three checks now? And the river is fully reset too. So this is like fresh, fresh, fresh. Yeah. You want to talk about fresh? Look at these dance moves. Ah, kick it. Here we go. <laughs> you gonna roll for performance, play? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Performance. That's a. It's an eight. <laughs> that's worse wow. than last time. <laughs> a wick, a wick. Uh, you have available to you scout ahead, which is dexterity. Careful consideration, which is wisdom, and boost morale, which is charisma. Scout ahead does what? Scout ahead reveals the top card of the deck in addition to a card in the crossroads, and you choose one. Okay, I do that. I have good dexterity. And I roll... I do not have good dexterity. I roll an 11. You do your best to try to figure out and divine what the best path is, but you just can't quite seem to make sense of it. Ah, well. Ah, well. Better luck next time. I can still just pull a card. Yeah, you have uh, left, center, and right. Uh, let's go right. You head to the right, and you hear a low rumbling that reverberates off of the wall, and the ground shakes and vibrates. Suddenly, rocks start falling from the ceiling of the cavern. It's a cave-in. Oh, no. Everyone needs to make a dexterity save. Oh. It's a trap card. It is a trap card. I rolled a nine. 19. 14. Seven. Those are not good rolls. Well, 19 and 14 for Chip and Mateed. It's pretty good. I was lim- limbered up from all the dancing. Kick it! <laughs> Mike, I hope you put music every time I say kick it. <laughs> Elga and Barney take some damage as rocks fall from the ceiling and hit them in the head. They take two points of bludgeoning damage. <sighs> Ouchies. The passage collapses in a heap and blocks the path before you. Hmm. Don't worry, everybody. I, I, I've diffused this trap card for you now. You have... We can... We can look at these other two directions next turn. Thank you for your sacrifice. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's it for Matid, which means it is Chip's turn. Chip, are you going to be able to do the impossible? Are you going to be able to find the correct route? A hundred percent. Have total confidence that I am about to find the right path card. What are my options? You have careful consideration, which is wisdom, and boost morale, which is charisma, both available to you. Oh, how's that wisdom looking? It is not good. Uh, mm. 
But isn't the moose morale just remove a dead end or something? Yeah. Yes. So not useful anyway, either way. Yeah, so the charisma, I, the charisma one's not useful. I'll go for the careful consideration. What's your modifier for wisdom? Minus one. Minus one? Oh, okay. <laughs> Big roll. Dang it! <laughs> Big roll. Dang it! That's a 20! 19! Yeah! Hey. Well, careful consideration allows you to reveal two cards in the crossroads this turn and choose one. So there's two available to look at, right? Or does the trap reset? Uh, the trap card stays in okay. the uh, So the left river. and center is available for Chip to look at. Yeah. Correct. Let's look. You weigh the options in front of you, and you know that going to the left is a dead end, but going center is a trap. Oh. So then if I go to the dead end, it just resets and we'll... Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> in universe, how do I tell this to the team? <laughs> it's just, I think in Chip, it would just be full confidence. This way, guys, and just straight to a dead end. <laughs> Follow me, gang. Put some pep in your step and okay, I power walk I, into a wall. <laughs> I trust you, Chip, to the ends of the earth. You'll never lead us in the wrong direction, ever. Never, ever, Elga. You can count on that. You can put money down on that. Well, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, we follow him, I guess, right? Yep. You follow him. Rather than a uh, a wall that he walks into, you walk through the passage and end up on a cliff with a very wide river down far below. Impossible to pass on this side. It is, unfortunately, a dead end. Do we see anything down in the river or anything like that? Or, like, any visuals? It's too dark to really see at that far. You can barely make out a very wide river uh, with various glints of light off of gemstones embedded in the walls. Chip would have run ahead to lead the group, and then he would have used hide to make the group think that <laughs> I fell off <laughs> the cliff. That's good. And then I pop back up and I say, oh, I'm goofing. Psych. Boot scoot goofing. You thought I was dead. I am not. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. That's it for Chip's turn, which means it's Hexel's turn. Hexel's going to try to help someone. Could he? Oh, okay. I was like, Hexel doesn't pick a card, I don't think, right? Hexel's no, been just no, buffing no. Their, the, someone. Loving. Correct. Hexel will buff. Oh, Hexel Elga. Will buff. Woo! So you will get advantage on your next action. On my next action. Yeah. And oddly enough, you are next. It is Elga who is next to go. And then after Ooh. Elga is Barney. Everything's coming up, Elga. I miss Jelga. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might still be Jelga. Me too. No, no, no. Hexel is back to their normal form. So then all you have available to you, Elga, is boost morale. Well, guess what, team? It's time to do it again. Is there any benefit from a successful boost your morale at this point? So the rest of the river resets, but that dead end card does stay there. And boost morale does remove a dead end card in the crossroads from the game. Nice. Okay. And that's charisma, right? Correct. Charisma. Ooh. And the, mm. My throat is so sore from all the cheering I've been doing all along the way. So it's a four. Unfortunately, you're a little too worn out. Your enthusiasm is not infectious. Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, uh, Chip. Nobody seems to be roused. So the path in front of you to the left is the dead end and center and right are both available. Okay. I'll do right this time. Oh, wait. Don't I have advantage on that check that I did? Oh, yeah. You could have advantage on that. That's right. If you want to do that, you're welcome to. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that again. I'll just roll again. Oh, uh, 20. Wow. Damn. You start talking, your voice cracks, and you think you're going <laughs> to lose everyone. But... <clears throat> Yeah, you clear your throat and pull it together, and you do indeed manage to uh, to lift everyone's spirit. Give me an E. <laughs> e. Give me an L. 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 Give me another L, which some people forget I have two L's in my name. L. L. Because some people forget it's in your name. There you go, my teeth. All right. Now G A like Georgia, which is like the land of like the mythical land of Georgia. <laughs> And that spells? L Georgia. 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 <laughs> All right. Team of Brainiacs. You actually have two dead ends in front of you. The left, the center, and then the right is not visible. So you can remove either the left or the center dead end. I guess I'll remove the center dead end. Remove the center dead end and replace it 
with a new card from the deck and it is face down, which means you can either go center or you can go right. And center is a new card that just got placed. Uh, I'll go center. Did we win? Well, we need two more. Do I need to dance? Well, no, I think we need one more because Barney got one. Correct. You just oh, need one got, more right And back. we got awarded one for the fight. That's right. Correct. Elga, you spot what looks to be a shortcut. You follow a trail that leads down to a rectangular tomb with three effigies and a stone door seals behind you. The door bears no handle or lock, but the center of it bears an emblem of an orange diamond. Orange diamond. And I'm in there alone? The whole party's there. We'll say y'all are, are traveling together. So we're looking at three effigies and how many tombs? Is there like coffins or anything or, or sarcophagi or? Yeah, there's three of them. Three effigies and three tombs. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when we were out there looking at the stars and it created a diamond shaped? I think the diamond is important here. I want to clarify something, John, say real fast. You're in one tomb. It's like a big tomb. And tomb, then yeah, in this right. tomb, yeah, are three effigies. Sorry. Okay. What are the effigies of? Kind of like big coffins. Think of it that way. Okay. But we can't, or do they have any like imagery on them or like heads? Yeah. I guess you go up to them and take a look. That goes without yes, saying. Yeah, yeah. They have etchings on them. The one to the north appears to have some kind of axe. The one in the center has some kind of hammer. And the one at the far south has a, what appears to be a shovel. Mm. Oh. Axe? Didn't we, didn't we come across things at the beginning of this place that had... There were... There, when we were in, Dash when we were in that uh, arena fighting the two gelatinous cubes, there were like not glurbians. What are the other ones? Uh, What's the bad ones? Globulins. Globulins. Well, not bad ones. We don't know, but the those ones, and they were holding pickaxes. I think. That's right. Is it an axe, axe or a pickaxe? A pickaxe. Pickaxe, hammer, shovel. Shovel. Gotcha. So it's just a recurring theme here, I guess. Maybe. What direction did we come in from? You came in from the eastern section. Okay. And they're they're lined up like in a vertical formation? Correct. Yeah, going from north to south. So we okay. see the hammer probably right in front of us? Correct. Yes. Okay. We could goof around and look into... <clears throat> Sorry, I got, the, I got that goof from the last fight in my mouth. Uh, could look around and like look at these coffins, you know, free loot crate. See what's yeah. inside? I just yeah, like how you pronounce. I just like how you pronounce coffins. Coffins. <laughs> Axel, do you have any input on this? No, this is all very bizarre. I've never been down here or seen anything like this. Okay. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> and we were all thinking it. We were all thinking. No, that was it. that was that was Blaine. That was Blaine. I just also <laughs> want to point out, like, I think there's some connection here with the diamond shape. There's an when, orange diamond on the door that we on came door. in on. Right. And when we were looking at the stars, it made like a diamond shape as well. Is it diamond? I think you described the constellation as a five-sided diamond or a four-sided diamond, Gustavo. I believe it was five. Yeah. So is the one behind us the same kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So that kind okay. of diamond. I don't know if it was like diamond gem or diamond like the thing on Mr. Sinister's forehead. Five-sided yeah. diamond. It's like almost like a star. Like think think of like a like when you like a cartoonish big old actual diamond like a, a like yeah. a, that they would be on a ring. Think okay. of that shape, like a Superman crest. Oh, like you're looking at it from the side, like it's cut down the middle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I investigate the shovel tomb, the coffin? Yeah. What 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 do you mean? Do you want like make an investigation check or like what do you mean? Uh, yeah, let's that's open where, her up. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> that's where his plan ended, right there. <laughs> you uh, open it up, and this seems to be occupied by some kind of plasmoid creature bearing corroded armor and a shield. I close it. <laughs> <laughs> what was in there, Chip? Nothing. Let's get out of here. Uh, there's nothing in this to this year tomb. Gee whiz. You guys want to see some more dance moves, huh? huh? <laughs> Can Barney go to, I guess, the hammer? That was the one that Chip just went to. Oh, shovel. Oh, you went shovel. I think yeah, you went shovel. So shovel, just for reference, is the one furthest to the south. Yeah. yeah. So that would have been to the left. Correct. Okay. So you're going to hammer, and you're open. You're doing what with it? It's hammer time. And open it. You're gonna hit it with a hammer? No. I've never heard <laughs> that expression before. That is new. You should coin that. All right, you open it up and there is like some kind of plasmoid creature in there. However, coming out from the chest of the plasmoid creature is some kind of 
like almost like snake-like serpentine disgusting looking creature which strikes out at you ah, uh, everyone roll initiative ah, oh no oh, oh, my God. dang it oh you is see, it a monster closed it. uh 10 for elga i think i oh shoot I th yeah. five i rolled a six i rolled a five so five for chip ten yeah. for elga six for barney five for matid yeah my dex is plus four or is 18 what's yours blaine it is plus two okay so i i go ahead so uh, matid first all right. Well, the uh, creature that Barney encountered rolled a 20 on its initiative, so it goes first. I wonder who it's going to attack. It slams out trying to hit the elderly cleric in front of him. Okay. Hitting AC 24. That will hit. <laughs> mm, that will hit, yes. Mm, indeed. Doing five points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay. Bludgeoning damage? What did it do? Headbutt him? It just like hit it with its body. Oh, <laughs> a body slam. Yeah, this is like, it's like a weird kind of semi-liquid snake-like creature. It's uh, it's not like any kind of life form you've ever seen before. So it's not a humanoid. No. Okay. That is it for its turn. Hexel is next. Hexel runs up to try to assist Barney, and rips off a piece of its own ooze and attaches an extra pseudopod onto Barney's body. What? 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 It's like a like a helping handopod, Barney. You'll gain advantage on an ability check or an attack roll. Wow. Thank you. That's cool. Just Disgusting. one. Yeah. All right, Elga, you're up. Okay, this might be a bit of a waste of a turn, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to use True Strike. So I point a finger at a target, and my magic, which I imagine are my paranormal powers, grants me a brief insight into the target's defenses. On my next turn, I gain advantage on my first attack roll against the target, provided that this spell hasn't ended. So sure. do I get to learn anything about like what it's resistant to, what it's vulnerable to, or anything like that with this? You feel like this kind of creature, like there's something, like it's, it's a very strong creature. You think that normal attacks, like normal non-magical attacks might be not quite as effective as magic or as elemental attacks. And you learn his name is Chuck. Ah, Chuck. <laughs> you can't hurt a Chuck. No. Oh. All right, cool. Well, that's my action, so I uh, yeah. unfortunately can't do anything else. I think that was worthwhile. No bonus action? Yeah, I'm not trying to, to tell you what to do or anything, but I'm just reminding you, like, if you wanted to, I think you could rage, right? Because raging is a bonus action. It is, and I guess because we did a short rest, I'm not long. I'm obviously it's been time too, so I'm not raging. I am gonna rage right. as well. Okay, that's it for Elga. Yes. Okay. And so I will have advantage on my next attack on it on this creature as well. Correct. Uh, help me remember that, please. So Elga is analyzing. Barney's up there. I assume Chip and Matid are kind of hanging back near where Elga was as well, right? Like y'all are kind of near the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you all are standing there, a second one of these creatures drops from the ceiling above you near the party that's at the door. Eesh. This room sucks. Let's see. Which of you is it going to target? One and two is Chip. Three and four is Elga. Five and six is Matid. You don't want to touch a Chip. Three. That's a uh, Elga. Uh-oh. Make me a dexterity saving throw, Elga. Good thing you're aged. <sighs> Nine. Well, could I... I have advantage on decks against effects that you can see while I'm not blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. So I have advantage on that? Yes. Okay. Advantage. <laughs> All right. The nine is better. <laughs> I rolled a six for my second one. All right. This strange, almost semi-liquid creature lashes out at you and wraps itself around you. Uh-oh. <laughs> starting to constrict you. I don't like this at all. You find it's very difficult to breathe. Oh no, so, but Elga doesn't have to breathe. Don't I? I'm a vampire. I need to breathe. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think John's probing for weakness. No, I don't know. I, like, I, I'm, I, you know, what's the vampire rules in our world? I think I, yeah. I, think I need to breathe. Yeah. Okay. Do I take any damage or conditions? You'll take damage on your turn. Your only condition is restraint. Barney, you're up. Then after Barney is Matit, then Chip. How far away are, is the other snake that just, there's one right up on me, right? Right, there is one right up on you. The other one is back where the party is, we'll say 20 feet or so. Well, I'm gonna cast Channel Divinity. Okay. And I'll do Twilight Sanctionary. Send around me a 30 foot radius. It's filled with dim light. It's around me for one minute. And it, it gives 
one d6 plus five temporary hit points, everyone in that group. And just for reference, it's like it, Channel Divinity is not like a spell you cast, it's just an ability you have. You have yeah. Yeah. various, like Twilight Sanctuary is a Channel Divinity. Like it's just. Yeah, yeah. It's my. Just nitpicking. Yeah. yeah. Does it count as like an specialization? Action or a bonus action? It's, it's an action. It's an okay. action. Yeah. yeah. Do uh, we roll or does he roll for everybody the same number? It says you grant, so I'm going to say he rolls since everyone the same number. Okay. It's three. Plus five. So eight. Eight. Mm-hmm. Temporary hit points for everybody. Oh, no, no. It, it's whenever you end it's end your turn in it. Oh. Yeah. I'll count that for me. So that'll be eight temporary. So and, that's and the end of your every, turn. It's every time at, you end your turn. So it's it like it, you can take advantage of it more than once. You can proc it. And then I'm using my little clock thing so it doesn't use up my channel divinity. Okay. And then... So I have telekinetic shove. It can telekinetically shove a target five feet toward or away. Can I cast that on the the little snake that's choking Elga? Yeah, you could, but since it's restraining her and grappled with her, I would say that it would move Elga as well. Like it would shove both of them. It's just Barney witnessing someone being strangled by a snake and just like, I'll push him. I'll push (laughs) him and I'll fix it. (laughs) Now call him a nerd and I'll take that in their face. Well, then I don't think that's going to be helpful. I'll, I'll shove the one that's in front of me. Okay, well, let's go with that one. They always say that. Shove the one you're with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> shove the one you're with. And you want to try to just shove it away from you. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a 12 plus 3, 15. It narrowly fails. So uh, you shove it back away from you. Okay, and then I'll run back behind the one that's Alga to be ready to, I don't know. Help next time. To do something. And then they okay. all, everyone can be near my little glow. Okay. I love being in Barney's glow. <laughs> you get your temp HP, and it's Matid's turn after Matid is chip. E. I'm really bothered when we're presented with puzzles. That's clearly like some sort of puzzle kind of thing. And I can't, I can't figure out what it is. Like, I've been trying to think about the axe, the hammer, and the shovel. There mm-hmm. was that the, the hammer, either there was nothing in there or chip closed it fast enough but it didn't seem like Gus was waiting for him to delay so I think there might have been nothing in there but then something fell from the ceiling that was the same thing that was in the shovel box I don't like this and also before the giant uh, cube of gelatinous stuff we saw three statues that were like reaching out running and crouched oh yeah Yeah. I forgot remember we were trying to make friends with them but I think that's just because I got frozen by the glob, maybe. Yeah. Plus, as you know, the dice, they are also cubes. Because, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I obviously just want to, like, I'm, I'm in attack mode. We're in initiative, and I'll, I'll fight these snakes. But I'm like, should we be smarter than this? Is there, like, a smarter path that, like... There's a unlock the key kind of thing we I'm could do. I'm just a barbarian. Anything? La, 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 la. <laughs> I don't know. Ask, ask Elga. No, Elga's <laughs> being choked by a, a snake right now. A bit tied up, literally. I'm trying to think, is there anything I can do to investigate what's going on? I also have terrible investigation uh, bonuses, so it'd be bad. I'm wasting so much time. I'll just do what I do best and attack these snakes. Why not? I'm just here to kick stuff and have fun. Is there an attack against the one around Elga that would not attack Elga? Like if I were to do like an unarmed strike or something against that thing? You think that they are so entwined that any attack you do on one would affect the other. Okay, then I will do what? Some sort of strength check in order to try to pull the thing off of Elga? Sure, why not? Sure, let's do it. What, a rolling strength check? Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, make a strength check, and then I'll make an opposed one here. That's I'm a so 13. fascinated by these things, too. They're like liquidy, oh. sneaky things. I rolled a one. It was a 19, then it, like, went over at the last second to a one. Yeah, you've never seen anything like this before, uh, Barbara. They're, like, they kind of, like, flow like liquid, but they're solid and snake-like, and they're sl- they slither around. It's really, really bizarre. Would you call them solid snakes? Uh, <laughs> no, they're more like liquid snakes. Dun, 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 dun. You succeed on the strength check against it, so uh, I assume you grab it and try to pull it off? Yeah. Yeah, we'll say uh, you grab it and manage to pry it loose from Elga and toss it to the floor. <sighs> okay. Thank you, my mysterious neighbor, Matid. <laughs> yeah, that could. I use Flurry of Blows. That was my action, yeah, doing that? Yeah. Okay, then I use Flurry of Blows 
to do two unarmed strikes against this thing that I'm, I've just thrown to the ground. Okay. And they are with my feet, my talons. It also, when I did my uh, insight or like, when I checked this thing, it's not as. Like, oh, that's right. vulnerable to physical blows. Well, I can't do anything magical in attacks with my bonus actions. If my with my actions, I could have. Unfortunately, all that I have left is bludgeoning. All right, let's do that. Roll for the attack. I rolled a 21. Ooh, that hits. And then I do nine points of damage. All right. Followed by something I'm going to re-roll with my inspiration dice, because that was a one. Oh, son of a... Bird 10. No, oh, that does not hit, unfortunately. Oh, Aww. son of a bird. But you did manage to do nine points of, or you rolled nine points of flurry of blows damage, right? Yeah, that's a very specific way of phrasing that, Gustavo. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, your first flurry of blows connects with it, and it does seem to do some damage to the uh, liquid snake in front of you. If I were to move, would you get an opportunity attack? I'm going to say yes, because you were in melee range to be able to hit it with your flurry of blows. I'm going to take the damage, and uh, I want to investigate. Can I, with my movement, would I be able to move to one of, to that, that effigy? Yeah, it's only 20 feet away. Okay, then I'm going to take the damage of whatever this little Metal Gear Solid character Snake. is going to do. Let's see if it even hits you. It lashes out, hitting AC 19, which I assume is a hit. Barely. Really? I actually have pretty high uh, AC. How high is your AC? 17. Oh. Ooh. Monks get like AC bonuses. It lashes out doing six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, I'll take that. It's weird that they're like liquid snakes, but they're doing bludgeoning damage. Because they're just hitting us. They're just like yeah, slamming just... against us. Right. butts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to look at that. Tension. I want to look at that effigy <laughs> that Chip was at. Okay. Yeah, that's the one further to the south. Inside is a plasmoid creature bearing corroded armor and a shield. That was the one that was inside the hammer? Shovel. Shovel. Oh, he went to hammer. Barney. And he went Correct. to shovel. Chip. Okay. So that's inside the effigy or that's on the effigy? It's inside. Inside the effigy is the this plasmoid with the armor and the shield. You can make, make an investigation check. This will go so well. It will. 19. Yeah. 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just got to say that before every roll. Yeah. <laughs> you notice that the shield bears an emblem of an orange diamond. Oh. <gasps> Another. What does orange have to, like, do you guys remember orange in anything else? I'm just wondering if there's significance there. Um, can we do a cheeky little, like, history check to see if we know what this, can anybody do a cheeky little? Is that, little... that going to be an action, though, like, if we're in combat? I'll say you can do it freely on your own turn if you want. So, Matit, if you want to, make, yeah, make, like, a yeah. history check, sure. I think quickly. That's only a 12. You can't recall anything special about that color, but I mean, you are aware that the orange diamond on this shield does seem to very much match the orange diamond on the emblem of the door. Is it like a key? Like a big dorky key. Okay, well, that is the end Maybe. of my turn. There is an orange diamond on this shield, and I am done doing things. All on right. this shield? You get 10 temp HP. All right, Chip, it's your turn. Hey there, Chip Annie. Oh, I just remembered. When I opened that sarcophagus, Effigy. that sarcophagus, there was a diamond shield. So I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run over to that. So how far away is that? And then how far away is the... Did you move away from it? I guess I didn't. I guess I had been there the entire time. Yeah, I don't think you moved. Because action commenced when Barney looked at the yeah. other guy. So Initiative, I might still be yeah. by it. So you're there. Okay. <laughs> Matid showed up and shoved you out of the way. He was like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, well, then I move the thing back and I, I take the shield out. All right. Ah, and then uh, I guess I'll run over to the one that's on the wall. The door. The door. Yeah. And then I, I just try to shove You're it in. Smashing that shield against it. I know my shapes. I know this shape matches this <laughs> shape. <laughs> it Very comes good, full circle. Chip. Very good. You press the two matching shapes together and you hear the door click and unlock and it opens. It seems to unseal. They kissed. I saved the day. <laughs> Does that, did the, the, the snake guys, did they go away or are they still around? They're still there. Alcar, are they still there? I, I do see them. The bird is swimming across. I don't know if you guys want to try to escape or if we want to try to kill these guys, but if the door is open, we can maybe slip out like a snake. Disengage. 
Yeah, I think uh, an, an AC retreat would be wonderful. Okay. I mean, they don't have, they're not grappling you, right? Because, because uh, Mateed yeah. ripped it off. So, yeah, she was freed. Okay. Yeah. 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 I guess I like head out, but I have a hand crossbow, so I could, I can shoot that at one of them to cover the retreat, I suppose. Sure. That sounds fun. Sure. I'm going to roll for that. That is a seven. You shot Barney. You shot Barney. <laughs> Ow! If you rolled a Barney! one, we could talk about that. <laughs> the bolt flies wide, clattering off the far wall. <laughs> you know, when like people in movies are bad at shooting guns, so they have like a hand in the air and they don't really know what they're doing with their bodies. So they just go. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was my my way of getting everyone's attention. Ah. I go bang. Everyone, we're leaving. Is that what those crossbows, crossbows that go bang? <laughs> yeah, when I shot the arrow though, I went bang. <laughs> everyone, we're leaving. <laughs> and then I leave. All right. I assume that's the plan. Everyone's going to beat a hasty retreat out of here. Yeah. That's what Matid will do. Yeah. yeah, we'll say that you all are able to uh, successfully navigate your way out of there. Run back down the corridor, turn a corner, and it dawns on you, you've reached the end of the labyrinth. We did it! Yay! Yay! Everyone get your temp get us. Also, I'm going to roll for everyone to get temp HP. Well, who hasn't gotten it? Well, uh, but before you do that, Barney, I, I do want to say, reaching the end of the labyrinth gives everyone either an inspiration die or five temporary hit points. So temporary hit points don't slack. So if you give them the temp hit points, that'll affect their I'm decision the, for the what they get. Die. Yeah, my, my temp HP will be better. I had yeah. an inspiration. What's your temp HP? He'll roll it. I'll have to roll for it, but it's plus five plus six. Ooh. Roll. I'm taking the inspo die. All right. I already got an inspo die that I forgot about. I just rolled. So someone gets a 10 temp HP. I'm good on temp HP. I took inspo die. I'll, I I'll got. take the 10. All right. Barbara gets a 10. Woohoo. Who is Barbara? Uh, El got. Wait, Blaine, did you, get, did you already get some? I'll take your temp HP. Oh, 11. I'll take it. That overrides the one HP temp I already had. And you already got some, right? Yeah, good. I'm giving some to Exile. Yeah. They only got six. <laughs> All right. That's fine. They have plot armor. Before you is an immense archway hewn of stone with a faint mark on the center. On either side of the archway are gemstone statues of plasmoid creatures. A jasper one holding a war pick and a garnet one holding a war hammer. But the way through the archway is blocked by a large mound of rocks, like a cave-in. Mm. Okay. So what's, what is this three threes of the, the, there was the three statues and then the three effigies and these three, three dudes. And Aren't there only, oh, there's two only two here? There's, there's only two here. Oh, there's only two. There's oh, one with yeah. a war pick and one with a war hammer. Correct. And they're not, they're like giant statues, right? Or are they just normal size? I don't know if I'd say giant. They're, they're big. And it's just a cave-in? Yeah, it just seems like there's a large mound of rocks, like a cave-in blocking the archway. A citizen might be trapped under that rubble. Let's help. Do the, uh, the things that they're holding, could we take out the war pick from its hand? I was going to ask that, but it seemed like it was large. They're big. It's all part of the statue. It's all, it's like carved into the oh, same. Okay. So it's not like, like the same a statue piece of, holding yeah. a thing you could take out. Correct. Okay. I'm just going to start moving rocks. Sure, Matid will help as well. Oh, and I do my thing that gives me uh, advantage on the next fight. Oh, gotcha. Good call. If you want to start moving out rocks, you can make a strength check. Okay. I'm also going to help as well. Now lift with your legs, not with your back. Nine. I forget, I could be imagining this or I could be misremembering from our other campaign. When we first got down here to Underglobula, did one of you find, like, digging tools? It was uh, uh, I think Elga. I... I had a, a pickaxe, yeah. I thought Elga did. So if if you want to use that, that would also help you. Uh, would that give me like advantage here. on my strength or something, or what would that do? It lowers the check you need to make okay. that I'm I'm checking against. You know, I'm looking in my inventory and I do have a neat flag. Does that do anything for us? <laughs> <laughs> no, it does not. Okay. My strength check is a twenty-one. So it's a twenty-one for Elga, twenty-one for Chip, and a nine for Matid. Is that correct? And a. 17 for Barney. Nice. Barney's old yeah. man strength po popping in. <laughs> yeah. You all begin digging out the rocks, and it's hard work, but you all you do make pretty good progress pretty quickly through here. Everyone make me a perception check. Oh, you got it, Chief. 14. 14. 9. 
Whoa, two of us rolled 14, two of us rolled nine. That's, That's funny. wild. Matid and Chip, both of you got 14s. As you're digging, you find a third gemstone statue made of peridot hidden amongst the rocks, but this one's top half is in pieces. Was threes. My kid was right. It. What's peridot? Peridot. Peridot, sorry, I said it wrong. I only know that word because of Steven Universe. Steven Universe, heck yeah. <laughs> so yeah, after you know a lot of backbreaking work, you manage to clear the pathway and you pass through the archway and enter a circular crystalline grotto. From the ground to the ceiling, your eyes are filled by the scintillating light of gemstones ranging from pebbles of deep blue azurite to melon-sized deposits of fiery yellow sapphire. Dividing the center of the grotto is a 30-foot crumbling chasm flanked by pools of turquoise liquid. Hegzel looks around, seemingly amazed. Have you ever seen so many gemstones? And so many colors, green gems and blue gems. I can't believe these gems have just been sitting here underground all this time. Have I been saying gems wrong my entire <laughs> life? <laughs> gems! <laughs> Are those different than gems? Holy mother of Ma! Look at that! Pixel points across the chasm and you spot the largest deposit of diamond ore you've ever seen in your lives and afterlives. It's easily bigger than a covered wagon and glitters with a thousand facets. Ding! Chip. Something's chiming in your bum bag of holding. Oh, uh, hold on, I just got a beep <laughs> from my beeper. You received mail in your cartas de Aya. Oh, that's the letter thing. Yeah, you open the letter, but stare in confusion for a second. All it says is, I'm amongst the dead now. Oh. I'm what? amongst the dead now? Do I recognize the handwriting? We'll have to find out in the next <gasps> episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. That's the most genuine, like, I, how dare you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thanks for listening, everyone. I had a lot of fun. It's uh, it's always fun when we do these mazes. It's uh, I like, I like doing these. I like these. them a lot, yeah. And I don't know if y'all have heard or not, but Stinky Dragon Adventures, our adaptation of the Infinite Campaign, is out, uh, right? Yes, it's out at this point. At least the first episode <laughs> yeah, is yes. at roosteeth.com. Um, we're super proud of it. We want you to see it. But also, Micah made a banger of a theme song. For yeah, the I've been Ooh. singing so it nonstop. Good. Well, when we were like doing rough cuts on set, people were like, uh -huh, uh -huh. they're like humming it. It was great. I haven't heard it yet. I'm excited. I it's I'm excited so to get your live re reaction. All right, everyone. Prepare your ear holes. Here it is. Heroes missing, world needs fixing. Who will save the day? Guess we're stuck with these four interns. Who the heck are they? Mud's friends are beasts. He's a prince. Bart plays the loot. What a flirt. Kyborg shoots both. Action surge. Gum gum likes hugs. Magic boy. It's time for Stinky Dragon Adventures. Woo! <laughs> That's a banger. It's like an 80s cartoon theme song. It's so good. It's so, so good. good. It's uh, very good. Well done, Micah. The claps mm -hmm. are good. And well maybe done, the, Maybe the best instrument on the entire song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Exciting. Well, I'm excited to, to see those episodes. Yeah, that's awesome. Go go check it out. It really helps us also just, you know, just check out the website, support us, and yeah. we appreciate it. StinkyDragonPod.com. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Gum Gum, and I'm a wizard. But I'm also an actor. And recently, the people at Rooster Teeth were like, wow, we really like your adventures. We want to make it into a TV show. And I said, okay, neat. And so they did. And it's called Stinky Dragon Adventures. And it's a brand new show. Eight episodes, an adaptation of our real life adventures. So if you want to see it, it's the best thing ever. You go to stinkydragonpod.com and check out all of our brand new adventures. There's familiar faces and names and brand new stories too. I really like it. And if you don't know who I am, go check out the Infinite Campaign. It's us talking about our adventures. Anyway, bye-bye. Hey, you, listener, did you know the best way to support Tales from the Stinky Dragon is to support us through a first membership? You can directly support us, and on top of that, you get something. You get ad-free episodes. Yeah, it's only $5.99 a month, and you get access to all the Stinky Dragon stuff, including Second Win, our bonus show, where we go deep dives into, like, the week's episode. You get, like, behind-the-DM information. You get insider knowledge from Micah, the world builder. It's great. 
If you want to find out more information, head over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first. Get more information and hey, sign up today. Do it. Did you know you can directly support the show and interact with us by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first. Cool, talented, amazing first stinkers like Queso Blanco, Sleepy Shaman, Cobb, Truffled, and M. Strider are directly supporting the show and get access to more great content like Second Wind, interact with us on subscriber-only Discord channels, and more. Again, that's stinkydragonpod.com slash first. This episode of Tales of the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Michael Reisinger with additional editing work by David Sanye. This week's arrow question was submitted by Michael Reisinger. Hey, I know that guy. And here's a quick shout out to folks who are interacting with us on social media recently. Here's some NPCs named after them in this episode. Hexel, the Blob's offspring, named after at eggs, the world destroyer on Instagram. Go follow us at Stinky Dragon Pod. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Interact with the community over on our subreddit at r slash Stinky Dragon Podcast or on the Rooster Teeth Discord. For access to the Discord, go to stinkydragonpod.com. And on the left side of the page, click on the community, then Discord right underneath that. And we'll see you there. Also want to give special thanks to some friends who write a voiceover for characters this episode, like Hexel, the Blob's offspring, voiced by Elise Willems at Elise Willems. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. What's in the box? It's a Taco Bell reference. Um, <laughs> think outside the box. David Seven? Fincher was a huge fan of Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> think outside the box. What? What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that cut of uh, the end of Seven. That's a, that's a product crossover. I didn't know I wanted. Uh, now I need it. <laughs> what did you oh, want? doing it shivering. It was burritos and tacos the whole time.